glass of cold water. It will set you all right again. There goes one of your effeminate fops with no more stamina than a chicken. <laughs> that is what I resolved for myself, my daughter. As for your brother, I have thought for him of a certain widow, which I heard of this morning, and you I shall give to Mr. Anselm. To Mr. Anselm? Yes, a strange, a, a staid and prudent man who is not above fifty, and whose riches everybody speaks. <laughs> I have no wish to marry, Father, if you please. And I, my pretty girl, my darling, I wish you to marry, if you please. I beg your pardon, <laughs> my father? I beg your pardon, my daughter. <laughs> I am the very humble servant of Mr. Anselm, but with your leave, I shall not marry him. And I am your very humble servant, but you shall marry him this evening. This evening? This evening. It cannot be done, father. It won't be done, daughter. No, it does. No, I tell you. Yes, I tell you. you never forced me to do such a thing. I will force you to do it. Oh, I'd rather kill myself than marry such a man. You will not kill yourself, and you will marry him. Huh. Did you ever see such impudence? Did anyone ever hear her daughter speak in such a fashion to her father? Did ever anyone hear her father marry his daughter in such a fashion? It is a match against which nothing can be said, and I am pretty sure that everybody will approve of my choice. And I know it will be approved by no reasonable person. There is the letter coming. Shall we make him a judge in this affair? Willingly. You will abide by all he says. Yes, whatever he thinks right, I will do. Agreed. <laughs> now, the letter. We have chosen you to decide who is in the right, my daughter or I. It is certainly you, sir. Oh. Do you even know what we are talking about? No, but you cannot be in the wrong. You are reason itself. <laughs> I want to give her tonight for a husband, a man as rich as he is good. As he is good. And the hussy tells me to my face that she scores to take him. What do you say to that? What I say to it? Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I say that I am on the whole of your opinion and that you cannot but be right. Yet perhaps she is not altogether wrong. How so? Mr. Anselm is an excellent match. He is a nobleman and a gentleman too, of simple habits and extremely well off. He has no children left from his first marriage. Can she meet with anything more suitable? It is true. But she might say that you are going rather fast and that she ought to at least have a little time to consider whether her inclination could recognize. Now it's an opportunity must, which I must not allow to slip through my fingers. I find an advantage here, which I shall not find anywhere else. And he agrees to take her without dowry. Without dowry? Yes! <laughs> ah, I have nothing more to say. A more convincing reason could not be found, and she must yield to that. It'll be a considerable saving Oh, to undoubtedly. This admits of no contradiction. <laughs> it is true that your daughter might represent to you that marriage is a more serious affair than people are apt to believe. To be happiness or misery of a whole life depends on, and that engagement, which is the last help death, ought not be entered into without great consideration. No, <laughs> without dowry! <laughs> that is absolutely right, and that must, of course, decide everything. But. There are certainly people that might tell you about such occasion. The wishes of a daughter are no doubt to be considered. And that this great disparity of age, of disposition, and of feelings might be the cause of many an unpleasant thing in a married life. Without dowry! <laughs> ah, it must be granted that there is no reply to that. Who in the world could think otherwise? I do not mean to say that there are many people who would tell you about who are the happiness of their daughter or on the money they may have to give for their marriage who would not like to sacrifice her to his own self-interest, and who would, above all things, try to see in a marriage that sweet conformity of taste, which is a sure pleasure of honor. Without dowry! <laughs> that is true. Nothing more should be said. Without dowry. How can anyone resist such arguments? <gasps> I fancy I hear a dog barking. Is anyone after my money? I will come back presently. Surely the letter not in earnest when you speak to him in that manner. I do it that I may not vex him. It's better to secure my ends. To resist him boldly would simply spoil everything. There are certain people who are only to be matched by indirect means. Temperaments averse from all resistance. 
restive nature, whom truth causes to rear, would always kick when we would lead them on the right road of reason, and it would only be led by way opposed to that by which we wish them to go. Tim, they can follow his wishes. We are much more likely to succeed. But this yeah. marriage, Valer! We will find some pretext for breaking it off. But what pretext could we find if it is to be concluded tonight? Well, you must ask to have it delayed. It must feign some illness or other. But they will soon discover the truth when they call on a doctor. No, 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 not a bit of it. Do you imagine that a doctor understands what he is about? Nonsense. Do not be afraid. Believe me. You may complain of any disease you like. The doctor will be at no loss to explain to you from what it proceeds. Ah, <sighs> it is nothing, thank heaven. <laughs> I'm sure, flight is the last resource we have left us to avoid all this. And if your love for your lease is as strong as... Yes! A daughter has no right to question her father. And when the most important question, without doubt, represents itself, she should accept anybody that is given her. Ah, good! That was beautifully said! <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir, if I carry a little too far and take upon myself to speak to her as I do. Why, oh, I, I am delighted, and I wish you to have her entirely under your control. Yes, you may run away as much as you like. I give him all the authority which heaven has given to me, and you will do all he tells you. After that, I resist all my expostulations if you can. I will follow her, sir, if you will allow me, and will continue the lecture I was giving her. Do so, you will oblige me greatly. She ought to be kept in with a tight hand. Ah, quite true, you must say. Do not be afraid. I believe I shall end by convincing her. Do so, do so. I'm going to take a stroll around the town, and we'll come back presently. Yes! Money is more precious than anything else in the world. <laughs> you are not so worthy a man for a father. He knows what life is. When a man offers to marry a girl without a dowry, he ought to look no farther. Everything is comprised in that. And without dowry, compensates for one of you, her, honor, wisdom, and probity. Ah, the honest fellow. He speaks like an oracle. Happy is a man who can secure such a servant. 